Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to continue with our series of location factor for the industries. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about the location factor of iron and steel industry. As you know, iron and steel industry is one of the very, very basic but most important industries because it supplies raw material to a lot of other industries. And one of the major producer of iron and steel in the world is obviously United States of America. So in this video, we are going to discuss about what are the location factors for iron and steel industry in the United States of America. And if you look at USA, we have basically three major regions are there where steel is being produced. So we are going to discuss about all these three regions one by one. So first of all, let us try to understand the map of USA. So USA is something that we can draw. It look like this. Something like this, if we try to understand. Now, what we can say that this side we have the Canada and this is the USA. Now, most importantly, if you look at, first of all, to understand the industrial location, we know that industries depend on several location factor. As you were discussed in the previous classes, the most important of these are the raw material. And we know that raw material, especially the mineral resources, they depend on the physiography of any particular region. So let us try to understand in briefly, how does the physical relief of USA looks like? So first of all, if you talk about in the northeastern part of USA, somewhere here, we have a very, very old mountain because it has formed a long time ago. This mountain is a type of old mountain. And this is what we call as Appalachian mountain. On the other hand, if you look at this side of USA, here also we have several different mountains are there, such as Cascade Range. If you go slightly more to the east, you have the Rockies Mountain. If you go slightly more to the west, you have the Sierra Nevada Ranges. So both side of USA, we have the big, huge mountain ranges are there. And as you discuss, if you look at the northern part of USA, we have bordering region with Canada. And here we have several lakes, which collectively are called as Great Lakes. So overall total five lakes are there that we can identify. So coming from what we can say is from west to east, first of all, here we have one lake. Then we have one lake that goes slightly to the south. Then here we have the third lakes. Then here we have the fourth lake. And then here we have the fifth lake. Now, each of these lakes, if we try to understand from west to east, we have, for example, the westernmost lake that is known by the name of Lake Superior. So I can write here number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. So the first lake is what we call as Lake Superior. The second lake is what we call as Lake Huron. The third lake is what we call as Michigan. The fourth lake is called as Lake Erie. And the fifth lake is what we call as Lake Ontario, which is also a city in Canada. Basically, we try to understand from one, two, three, four, five, we have five lakes, which are collectively called as the Great Lakes. Season. So Great Lakes, why? Because these are the lakes which are holding the maximum amount of the, or we can say highest amount of fresh water, not only in North America, but in the entire world. All these are basically a type of glacial lakes. In older time, when glacier was moving uh, over this landmass, they scoured deep valleys. And later on, when the ice age ended, the temperature become higher. And then we have the formation of lakes due to the melting of the ice water. So again, to summarize, what do we have here? Great lakes in the north, Appalachian mountain in the northeast, and mountains such as Rockies mountain, Rocky mountains, Cascade Range, and Sierra Nevada in the western coast of USA. And here we have one plate, this is called as California plate, which is having a transform plate interaction. And one more thing we can draw from here, from this region, we have one of the largest river of USA that originates and flows into Gulf of Mexico region. This is what we can call as Mississippi River. The Mississippi River enters into Gulf of Mexico, where it forms bird foot delta because of the shape of delta, we call it as bird foot delta. So this is the overall geography of United States of America. Now let us try to understand that where iron and steel industries are situated and how they are situated in this particular region. 
So first of all, let us look at the first region of iron steel industry that is situated somewhere in the Great Lakes region. Now why iron steel industry is situated here? If we try to understand this, we know that iron steel industry is one of the industry that is using bulky raw material, heavy raw material. So what basically happens is that if you look at the Great Lakes region, the first region where you have the development of iron steel industry, which we can call as the Great Lakes region. So in the Great Lakes region, somewhere around this lake, which we called as it Lake Superior. So in the Lake Superior region, what do we have? We have very high grade of iron ore that is found, which is one of the most important resources, raw material for the steel industry and high grade of iron ore. That means magnetite and hematite. These are the iron ore that we will found around Lake Superior region. Apart from that, also, if you go slightly to the south, where we have the Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, there also you have the other very important lime material, uh, raw material that is called as limestone, which is used for purification of steel or making steel more pure in nature. So both raw materials, iron ore near the Lake Superior, limestone near the Lake Huron. And as we move slightly to the east, here we have the Appalachian Mountains as we discuss. And in the Appalachian Mountain, you have very huge quantity one of the largest reserve of best quality of coal. The best quality of coal is what we call as anthracite coal. So in the Appalachian mountains, you have almost 50% of anthracite coal reserve of the world is situated in the Appalachian mountain. So anthracite coal, we have high grade of iron ore here and here we have the limestone. So in terms of raw material, all these raw materials are situated quite closer to each other. And now to top it, basically what we can see, the, all these lakes, all the five lakes that we have discussed are well connected with each other because of development of waterways over these lakes and also we have the canals that has been constructed here and there. So basically what happens, a sip that is moving from Lake Superior, it can move to this lake, it can move to this lake, it can move to this lake and this lake and from here by roadways or railways you can transfer the uh, coal to this place, to this lake and from there across this here we have one canal and across this canal then the coal can be brought to this lake superior region and when the ships are moving back they can take the iron ore from this region and supplies iron ore to this region that means what will happen around this region of the USA will have the availability of iron ore and coal and then ships can transfer iron ore here and around this region of USA also you have development of uh, you have the um, uh, presence of the iron ore and coal and it is due to this region what happens this entire belt right from the Lake Superior in the west to the Appalachian Mountain East, you have large number of steel plants in different different cities. Some are smaller in scale, some are very large in scale, but everywhere you have the presence of the steel industry. So let us try to understand the names of some of the important steel plants that are situated in this particular belt. So first of all, for example here near Lake Superior you talk about, we have a region that is called as Mesabi region or Mesabi range as it is called. So one iron steel industry is very well developed in the Mesabi range. Second, as we talk about, we have on this side, we have a small, small cities are there on both side of these lakes. For example, Chicago is there. Apart from that, the third city is what we can call as Detroit, which is also known as the automobile capital of the USA. So cities such as Mesabi range, Chicago, Detroit, further to the south of this region, you have another city which is well known for its super specialized industry that is called as Milwaukee. So all these cities are situated here. If you talk about this, to the south of Lake Erie, we have a city that is also called as Erie. So Erie is the name of city as well. Further to the south, we have some cities such as Buffalo is there. We have Buffalo. Further, you have another city that we can call as fifth city, which we can call as Pittsburgh. So these are the major iron and steel producer of USA in the entire belt from the west to east. Again, Meshabi Range, Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, Erie, Buffalo. So these are the major iron steel industry of the central to eastern part of United States of America. So this is the first reason. So what we can say again in terms of location factor, 
we have the presence of raw material iron ore we have limestone we have anthracite coal we have good mode of transportation basically we talk about the waterways these are cheapest mode of transportation that is available to us so due to very good connectivity that we have across all these lakes region and then the Appalachian mountain we have a good mode of transportation that also has developed the third factor what we can say is the power factor for example we talk about slightly in more detail we talk about the power requirements how the power requirement for this steel industry is fulfilled so for power again since we know that this region is rich in coal reserves so we have coal based thermal power plant that is developed here so we have coal based coal based thermal power plant and not only that if you come in this region the south of this region we also have dam that is called as tennessee valley authority a series of dam has been constructed over tennessee river so power requirement is also met by the hydraulic tennessee valley authority is there third we can say if you go on this side lake area side basically between the lake area and lake ontario we have a very known well known waterfall that waterfall is called as Niagara Falls. So, the Niagara Falls, because they are very picturesque, very high waterfalls, it is also used for the generation of hydroelectricity. So, we have a lot of energies uh, or power sources, coal based thermal power plant, we have hydroelectricity by Tennessee Valley Authority, and we have the hydroelectricity that is generated by the Niagara waterfalls. So, we have raw material, we have the mode of transportation well developed, we have the power requirement that is met also. Now, fourth and most important is what we can call as the market, because no matter how many or how good raw materials are distributed in any region, if there is no demand for the steel products, obviously industries cannot become successful. And that is where if you look at the map of USA, what we can understand that all across this region where you have development of iron and steel industries, you have many big industrial cities are there. For example, if you talk about Chicago. Now, Chicago is well known for its railway manufacturing. So, railway manufacturing obviously requires huge amount of what? Iron and steel. And that is what, that is why Chicago is serving as one of the major market center. Second, we talk about Detroit. Detroit, as we discussed, is well known as the automobile hub of USA, where you have many companies such as General Motors is there, Ford is there. So, this automobile industry is also require huge amount of steel. Milwaukee, as we discussed, it's well known for super specialized industries such as development of robotic arms, robotic legs, so for physically disabled people. So they also require huge amount of steel. And Pittsburgh, obviously, it is well known for its heavy metal industries, heavy equipment in our electrical industries, which also require huge amount of steel. So market is also available in the same cities because of development of other industry, which uses steel as their raw material. So all the four major factors, raw material, transportation, availability of power and the availability of market is present. Now, not only that, for example, we know that USA is also one of the major exporter of iron and steel in the world. So, for export purposes, what they do? Now, here we have discussed, we have Lake Ontario and from this region, you have a river that goes to the north. This river is called as St. Lawrence River. So, via St. Lawrence River, you also have connectivity to the Atlantic seaboard of Canada. Not only that, here also you have the ports, very well developed ports are there. So due to this, the steel that is produced is brought to this port. And then from there, it can be exported via ships to different, different regions, different, different parts of the world. So that is about the first region of USA, which is known for the iron and steel industry. The second reason of USA where we have development of iron steel industry is you can see on the eastern side of the Appalachian mountains. Now why iron steel industry is developed here? First of all, obviously the common factor we have is we have presence of the coal, high grade coal, anthracite coal in the Appalachian mountain. And second, as we have discussed, since very good connectivity is there between say Lake Superior and Appalachian, what happens? The iron ore is brought from the Lake Superior to this region. So, as we have discussed, we have the presence of both or availability of both iron ore and the coal in this region. Now, what is the other driving factor? So, if you look at the map of USA, you will see that most of the bigger cities, metropolitan cities, such as we have Boston or you have Washington, the capital city is there, or you have New York, 
so all these major metropolitan cities are situated along the eastern seaboard of usa along the north atlantic coast and these big cities are one of the major consumers of the steel or steel related items steel related product in usa so market is also well developed third what we can say if you go slightly to this side we have a very very important city that is called as virginia now virginia is located on the coastal region it is also headquarters of us navy and also virginia is well known for its ship building activities so the ship building industry requires steel in very huge amount so the market is both in terms of the urban agglomeration that we see here as well as the requirement of the ship building industry for the raw steel that is also met by the iron steel plant that is situated to the eastern part of the appalachian mountain and also for export purposes here we have one port that is called as portsmouth so via portsmouth then usa can export steel can send steel to the different different regions of the world and that is why we have development of the iron and steel in this part of the usa so this is the second region now if you come slightly to the southern part of the appalachian mountain here we have one very important city that is called as atlanta so in atlanta also you have a development of iron and steel industry now here major carbon produce, uh, the coal producing center if you want to know you can know they have several cities are there such as we have carbondale one of the major coal producing region of the appalachian we have scranton very uh, large coal producing region of the appalachian region so these are some of the major cities apart from that we talk about the first region the second region now third region is where it is situated somewhere around the mississippi delta river where we have discussed we have the atlanta so this is the third region now fourth region which is producing very high quality of steel which also has a sort of uniqueness to itself that is situated on the western coast of usa that means if you look at the map here again if you talk about the western coast of usa this we have discussed this is our rocky mountain ranges here we have a plateau that is called as colorado plateau and from the colorado plateau we know that we have a river that is flowing through this through this region this river is called as we can say colorado river and on the colorado river we have a dam very very big dam that is called as hoover dam and also this region what else do you have in this region you have the availability of crude oil reserves as well right so what is the uniqueness of this western coast of usa as we discuss the hydro electricity is the cheapest source of electricity so due to the development of hoover dam over colorado river we have the cheap power cheap electricity that is available second if you talk about here we have large cities on this seaboard as well such as we have in california you have one city uh, this is uh, for example los angeles is there in california so several such large to big cities are situated on this coast as well and that is why the market is also available for the steel that is being produced here so cheap electricity by hoover dam we have the crude oil reserves that meet the energy demand of the steel industry as well you have development of market due to presence of large cities such as california and los in the california we have los angeles and also since steel industry requires huge amount of water as well what do we have here is we have the colorado river that is providing water supply to this particular region of usa so that is how we can understand the development of iron and steel industry in usa which can be divided into four regions one this is the region that is around the lakes and the appalachian mountain west of appalachian mountain one then to the east and south of appalachian mountain and third region is situated in the western coast of usa along the rocky cascade ranges and around the colorado river region so this is all about the iron and steel industry of us so that's all for today's video we'll come with another video when we talk about the iron and steel industry of another major steel producing centers of the world such as central in uh, this we can say russia is there one of the major iron and steel producer then we have the germany in europe we have sweden 
we have Japan, we have China, and then finally we'll come to India. So we'll discuss about each of these countries and the steel and iron industry one by one. That is all for today's video. I hope you understood the basic concepts of iron steel industry and the location. Thank you very much.